Hey, what's up, everybody? Here's another episode of Nights at the Roundtable. Today, we're going to talk about what makes a real relationship. You know, I used to think it was the wedding or it was the ring or it was these specific things that society placed big, big importance on. But we talked to our friends Mike and Vanessa, who have been together for 15 years without a wedding, without anything, just pure commitment. So it started making me think, what does make a relationship work? It has to be more than the superficial things. We dive into that and so much more. Listen in. Hope you guys enjoy it. Check out the song at the end of this episode. Check it out on iTunes. Please be sure to subscribe on YouTube. We love you guys so much. Hey, and check out our merch. That's an easy way for you guys to support what we're doing and so we can keep doing it more. Uh, just go to ManuelReyes.com. That's ManuelReyes.com. We love you so much. Here is Nights at the Roundtable. And welcome to another episode of Nights at the Round Table. It's your boy, Man Wheezy. I got my queen right next to me. And hey, because we're we're all on quarantining, um, we're doing all this from a Zoom. And uh, our friends, which you guys won't notice because we're going to be, I'm going to be editing this together, but you'll notice we're all in different places. We got our friends, Mike and Vanessa, uh, who are in Encino, right? Encino? And yep, Sino, right, right down guys. the street from you guys. <laughs> there we go. They're literally three houses down. Okay. <laughs> and then much. we got Be Real out there in Van Nuys. Van Nuys, right? No, or North Hollywood, bro. North this Hollywood. Is, this is a no-ho. Let's go. No-ho. <laughs> this is <laughs> the artistic part, son. <laughs> yeah, the arts district. You know. We got a, we got a the theater. <laughs> we got hella dancers that walk around, son. Exactly. Yeah, we got no YouTubers ho. out here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Up and coming. Yeah, it's been, this is so. I love, I love um, technology, and at the same time, man, I, I think it's crazy that this is how we have to do it, which is weird because everything that's about um, nice around table is about is about community and all that. But it's cool that we get to do community like this. It's just a new way. This is the new normal for now. But knock on wood, it ain't gonna be for for too much longer. Um, so to, to get into it, what we were going to talk about today, you know, I was on, um, we did a couple FaceTime with a couple of friends of ours that are couples and they were talking about, um, they made jokes and mentioned as if, they're like, man, there's a lot of people that are going to get divorced and break up from this, from this Corona thing. And we laughed cause we thought, oh man, that's funny. You know, like I didn't take them serious. From but, being quarantined yeah, together. Yeah. From being too quarantined much time together, together. Too much time. Either and broken up like, or pregnant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Broken up or pregnant. Or both. And I was yeah. like, well, damn, I think, you know, I don't think they were playing as much as, as I thought they were. And it made me think, you know, what is it that really makes uh, a relationship work, especially a marriage? I think uh, for me, when I got married, the level of accountability went up so high because I mm. knew now, not only one, I can't go nowhere, but uh, two... <laughs> Uh, I have somebody that is now a direct reflection of everything that I do on a daily basis. Like they're going to be able to see everything mm -hmm. I do and call me on my shit. So there's no getting away from that. And vice versa. And vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I always had this thing that I knew that marriage was more than all the stuff that we make it to be, especially the wedding industry, especially um, yeah. everything that they try to make it about. I remember our first big argument was mm -hmm. because of our wedding, because Anne wanted to spend <laughs> this insane amount. And I was like, I didn't make that all last year. That's not going to happen. Like, oh my God. Yeah. We can't do that. And that was our first big argument. Mm -hmm. And so it started getting me thinking. And if you guys don't know, Mike and Vanessa, we met Mike. Uh, he was our trainer. Uh, probably like what? Is it three years ago now? Or three, three, like or seven. Three? I don't know. Seven. I don't know. A long time like ago, but now longer years. than we were living Wait, here. What are you so we about? had just moved here. So we've been living here five years. So it's five years because we just moved here. So you had to go to a different gym and you started looking up on Yelp uh, different like trainers or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we found the most hated trainer. Yeah, which is funny. Um, <laughs> and then and, so and now went, I need a trainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So and, yeah, I went I went and found Mike and so Mike's a, a trainer and this whole the whole time it was a good minute before uh, when we thought, you know, Mike and Vanessa, we just assumed that they were married cuz they acted like married folk. And then one day we found out they weren't married. 
Yeah. And like most people who who cohabitate, you know, they I guess they understand the the dynamics of that relationship. But people who are like used to a typical norm of, oh, this is how you do it. You get married, you do the dress, you do the whatever. This is what makes it official. Hell but you guys know <laughs> you guys are living on a whole nother. Yeah, you're living in a whole nother truth, a whole nother reality to where you've been together 15 years. No yeah, marriage. Years. No Happy. marriage, but you're as committed as married people. So what it made me think of, damn, it's it has to be more than just the vows. Like vows are cool. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but vows are words. And words Absolutely. without action is just is empty. Yeah. So it can't be about right. it can't be about the words. It can't be about the wedding dress. It can't be about the wedding day. Only because I try to think, man, whenever we've had either like an argument or a hard talk or a hard whatever, never in my mind have I ever thought, man, but that wedding dress, I should probably <laughs> stick it out. <laughs> or, or man, but we spent so much on our wedding, we should probably try to make this work. <laughs> like I've never thought any of those thoughts. I've only thought right here and now, is this worth it? Exactly. But yet we spend so much time on these things. Like I know girls that have been searching for their dress for like eight months, planning their wedding a year, two years out. Sure. I, like I know girls have been it, searching for their dress since they were 15. Sure. You know? <laughs> making it such a priority. And my question then is, why aren't you like, or why don't we, why don't we do counseling a year out? getting ready to get married why don't we learn conflict resolution a year out and and study these things communication like how to de um dissolve a, a a toxic situation how to be honest with one another like a year out and take these classes and take it as serious as we do the the dress or the venue or the ring i mean shoot we'll spend you know however much on a ring but then when it comes to counseling it's like nah that's too expensive but fool, you just spent five G's on a ring. You know what I'm saying? So that is the conversation I wanted to like approach and, and ask you guys really, what do you think has been a successful key or at least one thing that you find yourself working on more than ever to make a relationship successful? <laughs> wow, there, we could answer this so many different ways. I know. Um, well, first of all, um, I mean, we, yeah, we've been together for 15 and, 15 and a couple months. 15 years and a couple months. But the one thing that has made it really easy is the fact that we have the same last name. So I get my health insurance through her work, y'all. What? <laughs> Don't need to buy the cow if I get the milk for free. So anyways. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, no, no. I, I think there's a little bit of background. I, I, you know, honestly, we have really defied the odds because we really... Um, our, 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 our relationship started off really rough. It, it, no, it, we had a great first date. We always talked about, like how you say, man, you know, some people talk about that wedding date or that dress. Oh, we talk about our first date a lot because we had the best first date. I'm going to be... Uh, I'm our gonna first be, last date. Our first last date, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm going to be honest with you, the moment I saw her, um, I fell in love with her. I was like, that's Aww. it. I'm done. She, she, was, she was on a blind date with some other dude. And, uh, and I was just like... That's mine. What are you doing over here? Move over, bacon. Here comes Sizzaline because I had to talk to her. <laughs> so, I mean, but then we started dating, and unfortunately, uh, we had a lot of fun. And she and got pregnant. I got pregnant really quickly. <laughs> really quick. So we didn't get to really get, get to, to know, know we... each other that well before we got really, really serious really quickly. Yeah. And um, that caused a had lot to to... of conflict. Like yeah. I was treated like I was, you know, 16 and pregnant when here I was 28 and pregnant. 28? Um, 28, 27? 28, 27, around there. Yeah. But my I come from like a very strict Catholic family. And so here I am, the first of four daughters. And my parents, my grandparents, like I was, I brought shame to the family. Oh no! Wow. <laughs> and it was drama. And then I walked in, and they were like, "Oh hell I know, no, party boy! He's not gonna take care of you." You know? Yeah, it was they, awful. they, uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot. Uh, we actually had a lot of problems early on in our relationship because of that. We really didn't have a, a good beginning. 
No. But we tried. <laughs> we really, really tried. And we had to get to know each other. But we defied the odds, uh, thankfully. I mean, we're very happy now. Um, and God, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you guys break up during that time and then get back together? Or you just stayed together the whole time and it was tough? There were some times, definitely some moments where we, we considered almost. breaking up um, several times. Several times. Uh, what were the reasons? Like, can you pinpoint them? Or, or, or is there like a oh, common yeah, thread? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. F- well, I remember, I mean, one, like the arguments were pretty much the same. Um, we just had different styles of communication. And what? Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, I come from, like, my dad's a psychologist. We talk about our feelings a lot. And he would just, you know, bottle them up. And so he would just have these explosions. Cierto no? No (laughs) cierto. And instead of, like, talking it out, like, hey, you know what? Like, this, you know, let's talk about this. I mean, I'm also not, I'm not perfect. Please oh, don't Oh, thank you. That. I was waiting for that. <laughs> oh my God. But we honestly just have, <laughs> we, and it's better now. It's better <laughs> But we now. definitely had a lot of issues with communication. We uh, had, so do you think you communication know, is, huge. is the one, the one thing that. We had a different way of communicating. Honestly, hmm. we just really had a different way of communicating. Um, I didn't like the way she wanted to. She didn't like the way I wanted to. We just had, uh, and then that would lead into the next level of argument. And then it turned into kind of like a, it it started looking like, you know, a web of all these different arguments. It started branching out into all these things. Then we were arguing for so much, we forgot what we were originally arguing about, you know? So we we fell into that a lot. But I'm going to be honest with you, what always brought us back were our kids, you know? our kids really kept us together. That's one. And two, I loved her. I, <laughs> I, I love her very much. I, did, I couldn't manage my life being without her. You know, um, it would break my heart thinking about that. Um, what, but, what would you say, and, and this will be for, for us, B, as well. What would you say your communication style is? Because you said you didn't like how she communicated. She didn't like how you communicated. So what would you say... What would you say her communication style is? And let's see if she agrees. And what do you say your communication style is? All right, you're about to see an example of an argument um, in a second. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys are just asking shots fired. No, but um, you know what? I'm just going gonna, gonna to be honest. And you could have disagreed with me, and that's fine. Um, with Vanessa, she likes the drama. I mean, no. it's very <laughs> – see what I'm saying? <laughs> It's like, for me, I was like, what's the goal here? What are we trying to find out here? What are you mad about? Okay, that's what you're mad about. Okay, well, she wants an apology every single time. And if I feel like, hey, I'm not going to say sorry for something I did wrong, but I am going to say we have to just disagree. That's it. And no, hell no with her. She wants that apology. For what? When I'm saying I didn't do anything wrong. Right. You know, and then I'd be like, after three hours later, I'm like, fine. You want a sorry? Then I'm sorry. There you go. And then, <laughs> which is very un- like not sincere. So, oh, see, now I have to say it. Okay, um, I, corazón, I, I, mi amor. corazón. And now she's like, I don't feel it. I'm like, oh my god. And now we're fighting about how we say sorry. No, that's honestly, right. Tone. It's a lot of it yes. has been tone. Like, how do you say it? Um, my dad would always tell us, like, you have to use your social antennas. So make sure to figure out. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> and so, because do you hear how he gets like, he just has a naturally like, Oh my God, do you tone. hear her? <laughs> he's just very strong. And so sometimes yeah. when he's like trying to communicate something, if it, it could be saying, he could be saying like, I love you so much. But instead he's like, I love you so much. It's like, oh God, what, what are you saying? <laughs> You know, so tone, I yeah. am one who definitely Look takes eternally. tone into consideration, and it's sometimes it can be a little complicated. He has so, a lot yes. of passion. Yes, but all the message can be, yeah. I have that problem. I have that problem. Yeah. Um, B, what would you say your communication style is, and what's Maddie's? I I process things at a very quick level. Like I'm very in touch with like what I'm feeling in the moment. What is what is possibly my next step in that? And Maddie is like just the opposite. She's just like, shit. I don't even know how I feel. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you not know what you feel? You know. And uh, early on, man, that used to get so annoying because 
sometimes I'd be like, hey, let's hash this thing out right now. Cause like, I want to get to the resolution. Like, I don't care about being right. I just want us to like this connection to feel like we're connected right now. And so when there wasn't any resolution, it always felt like, well, our connection is based off us arriving at kind of the same point of like, hey, this is where we stand on common ground. And this is where we're not so much. And so for Maddie, she's had to get used to me like probing, asking questions to try and oh, get her. My. That's me. That's her, I, dude. I gotta like, I am going to, if I can't tell you where to arrive, I'm going to ask questions to make you feel like you're on this journey <laughs> to arrive okay. to understand with what you're feeling. <laughs> Let me ask you something. How Brandon. does Maddie respond to that? Does she go with you or is she like, yeah. why are you asking me all these questions? No, she does. Cause she just, she understands. I think, and that comes down to the biggest thing is like, she trusts my heart in that. It's like, I'm Thank trying to you. get to, I'm trying to get to understand where you're coming from. So these questions aren't me trying to prove something like, yeah, what I said, you should listen to it in the first place. Mm. It's more of like, Hey, you need to understand this about yourself or whatever it is we're talking about. That's Manny, that, see, Manny's that's approach key. is the same way, but I, I say I feel like I'm on the stand, like I'm on the witness stand, gotcha. and I instead of him asking me questions, I feel like he's questioning me, and then I'll be like, okay, what's the answer you're trying to get me to? Just tell me what yeah. you but want see, me to say. Look, look, that's but I B, sound like that's me. B said, <laughs> but B said something very, very, very key. He said, she comes along because she trusts me. She trusts that my heart is not to try to be right, not to try to prove you wrong, but it's that he, he wants to get to the bottom of how she's feeling. So that is an ongoing thing with me and Anne's where I'm like, <laughs> at what point are you going to believe that I am on your side? Because you keep like you're defensive from one. And I know why she's defensive. People get defensive when they don't have answers for questions that you ask. Because they either feel dumb because they don't have the answer. They feel attacked because they don't have the answer. And so their defense method is up. For me, if I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer. Yeah. That's it. I don't feel attacked. It's just I don't have the answer right now. I'll get back to you. I feel attacked. So oh, she her? feels attacked yeah. no matter how many times, I, no matter how wh wh how I ask her the questions. Man, and I, I, uh, I wish I could say I'm going to get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, let me, you let know, me, it, let me hold on. Let me give you an example. Like, let's say an argument for us starts at around 8.37 p.m. You know, we put the kids to sleep. You know, I go take a shower. We're still going at it. It's around 11.35 p.m. And it's, we're still going at it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bed. She goes, fine. She goes to the living room. I don't see her. I fall asleep. I'm in La La Land. <laughs> she comes to bed around 3.30 in the morning. I wake up around 6.35 a.m. I just open up my eyes. I just move a little bit, and she feels that I'm awake. <laughs> so, <laughs> what about last night? We didn't finish it. <laughs> I just opened up one eye, didn't even have time to scratch it from all the stuff in it, and she's already questioning me. That's her. She cannot my wait. My mind just goes on oh, and dude. on and on. Yeah, like, dude. I need to get, I like resolution. No, I like, you don't like resolution. I like you to like learn. To, you like, you learn my I, like sorry, to, I love you so much, right? <laughs> no, but for me, it's also like, let's address it and like, let's move on from this. But let's <laughs> learn from it. Did you just it. say move on from this? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> but you can't if it just keeps going on and on. Well, here's the so, thing. Here's yeah. the thing, Mike. Here's the thing to, to, to prove, or well, not to prove Vanessa's point, but to, to be uh, a devil's advocate. <sighs> There's a lot of times that I keep things going, and the reason I keep things going, and here's the irony of it all, um, is because I feel like Ange isn't understanding what I'm saying. The reason I feel that she's not understanding what I'm saying is because her actions are dictating to me that she doesn't understand, nor is she listening to what I'm saying. And also, it is part of your Enneagram number that yeah. your characteristic <laughs> is to be understood. So that is I think well I think I think that's probably desires. shared from every human being. I don't right. know a human being that doesn't want to be understood. Of course, but we have to acknowledge that in your characteristic, in your wiring, you have a heightened sense of needing to be understood. Correct. So there is a little and, bit and of because meaning, but here's, also here's why I feel I need to be understood because you know how you guys said earlier that the, you have the same argument over and over and over. So that would be us and Angela's uh, opinion is this is we this is just how it is my opinion is it doesn't have to be this way 
Hmm. So when 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 I'm trying to tell you something, right, and you tell me, I got it, I got it. And she would make fun of me all the time. She'd be like, man, he just goes over and over. He keeps going and going. And then I'm like, oh, but that's interesting. We keep having the same fight over and over. So where is the breakdown? You tell me I keep going and going and I'm annoying because I'm a, you're, you're, you've already understood it. But I keep pounding you. But then I ask you, hey, what am I trying to say here? She cannot answer. What do I really, what hurt me about this? She cannot answer. Why did you do this again when I already told you 15 times this is what hurts me? And you still did it. So you're showing me actions that you did not listen at all to what I said was important to me. But yet you are annoyed with me when I try to regurgitate the message. And that is the, that is the ultimate like uh, disconnect. Because if I tell you I hear you, you don't have to tell me again. And then I do not prove any action that I heard you. Why would the other person then be like, oh, yeah, she heard me. You wouldn't because your actions are not proving that you heard, understand or want to change the thing that is hurting the other person. So I think that's something that you have to self-reflect on. If she's continuing to bring something up, you have either addressed it, which then she won't have to bring it up again, or you keep ignoring it, which is why she keeps bringing it up or the other person is bringing it up because they feel unheard. That's why I keep bringing it up. We're getting better now because Anne started going to therapy and started realizing. <laughs> like, I, I've been going to therapy oh. for years. I didn't mean that like you're First crazy. First of all, I'm just no. saying. But because we started she... to get better because also he's I didn't learning mean that how to communicate way. without oh. doing this with his nostrils. I didn't mean that in a negative way. I'm sorry. I didn't mean I didn't mean it like, oh, finally this trick got therapy. I'm not saying that hey, at all. Hey, Ange. Ange, can you take Vanessa? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying that, to take him. Does that make sense though, babe? But speak on that because you know that's I'm being I'm being accurate as far as like what like in processing it. Because and the reason I say this is because I told her this and she hates. No couple likes being told what's wrong with the situation or what's wrong. Like one of them knows what's going on, and I would tell her I know what's going on. I know why this is happening. No, you know I think it's I think it's it is important for you to ask yourself: Am I doing this? Am I this way? You know, am I am I causing some of this? You know, it is important. You have to identify the question. You have to ask those questions to yourself. You know, because if you're keep if the, the, these things keep coming up over and over, you gotta ask. Like Vanessa has told me things over and over again in the past, and I literally had to ask myself, Am I that way? Am I what she describes? You know, and 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 many years ago, I I did. I, I and I come to, I came to the conclusion that yeah, she there there's some truth to what she said about me and I try doing my best to uh, to change that because if that's what's going to make her happy then it's going to make me happy you know right. so now every time before I come to the house I give her a call and ask her what is is there anything I can do for you while I'm out here because that's was one of the things yeah <laughs> but well, do you really you. mean it do you mean it yes, you're do. saying I, it I'm just kidding <laughs> but do you like, want what? to go to Whole Foods for me that yeah, reminds I, me of that reminds me of the breakup, the movie, Vince Vaughn, where she's like, I wanted 11 lemons. He's like, well, I bought you six. Why do you need 11 lemons? <laughs> like, I was trying to make a centerpiece. And he's like, so we're not even eating the lemons? We're just using them for decoration? Or how about when he goes, how, I don't, how, do, I, how do you Brandon, want me do to you want guys to have do the any, dishes? Have anything you and Maddie, like a through line argument, something that you guys always find yourself going back to? You know, it's mostly little things now. A lot of the major things, I feel like, again, we're, we'll go through changes and probably in a year or two, we'll probably have another major one or whatever. But right now, it's been mostly just minor stuff. So it's like little things that I do that I'm unaware of. Like, mm. it's so funny how our ego tricks us into thinking we know ourselves better than we actually do. Mm. And I think that's why it's so powerful having a partner is because most of the time when they're saying stuff about us, it's probably right. And it's because like it's if I were to ask some if I were to ask you guys, hey, um, what are the biggest ways that you show love? And one partner would say, well, I do the dishes. Well, I take the trash out or whatever. And you would look at their partner, their spouse and their partner spouse probably rolling their eyes a little bit because our ego presents this fantasy of what we really believe about ourselves, which some of the time is not actually true and that's mm. not actually reality. So little things that I do, like I leave cupboards open. 
I leave drawers open sometimes. And I, I, th- I like, in my mind, I think, nah, I close that. Like, why would somebody leave that open? I just got a glass <laughs> to get a drink. Like, whatever. And Maddie will be literally right behind me. And I'm like, hey, are you good? Like, what are you standing behind me for? She's like, I'm just going to close this drawer. I'm just going to close this cupboard. And I was like, I was going to do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You didn't let me finish. (laughs) Yeah. You didn't even give me a chance, babe. Um, But it's been mostly little things like that. But it's it's weird because recently I've just really been discovering. I'm like, oh, actually, I don't know myself as well as I thought I did. And Mm -hmm. a lot of the little things that Maddie points out in me is it's not to try and be critical of me. It's actually like yo, this is a mirror to discover I'm not as good as I thought I really was. And this is also an opportunity for me to grow and to be better for her. That's why I think like having that that, that person there is such a powerful thing because I think someone said it earlier, it's like built-in accountability. Yeah. So for Maddie and I, it's mostly just been little things that we're just trying to hash out. And the other thing too, man, that Maddie's amazing at, like I'm not as good at, I'm a little bit like, Hey, let's finish this conversation. Matt, Maddie will just drop stuff and go like, won't even hold really a grudge against me the rest of the night or anything like that. Like we could get into it. And she's like, all right, it's whatever. Let's move on to oh, whatever's next. That, that must and, be so nice. <laughs> dude. It must be so nice. <laughs> I love she, that. Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm, so good Uh, oh my god i'm i'm not so good at that because i'm trying to still process this whole thing in my mind or whatever and i think part of that maybe comes from maddie's background you know there was like there was so much family drama growing up for her and i think in order for her to actually thrive in that kind of situation she had to be really good at letting things go Mm. because if she'd have held on to things dude it would have been just like a very shitty childhood and And so I think that's just like, it's not something that she tries to do. It's just like, hey, I've been doing this my whole life. Like I've experienced way more drama than this. And the other thing about her that I really appreciate too is she's not super emotional when it comes to these little back and forth that we have. She's a lot like her dad in the sense it's like, it's very logical, very rational. So we can actually like approach things from a a standpoint of saying, okay, this isn't working let's look at it from this way. And she's like, okay, yeah, I get it. And so I think that's helped our dynamic a lot, especially when it comes to the major things that we've had to hash out. Mm. Gosh, I wish I, (laughs) listen, I am working on those things in therapy and working on, um, figuring out why I get so triggered and, um, my therapist has explained it as um, the limbic brain and some other brain, but she like talks about your brain like this. And once you start mm-hmm. getting triggered, like Manny could say something and it, maybe it's less about what he said and more about what it triggered from my childhood, from mm-hmm. whatever in my past. And then slowly all like my receptors start getting disconnected. And then once you get here, then it's forget it, you need at least 20 minutes to come back down because when you're here, Mm. you're not in your rational brain, you're not saying anything or even receiving information rationally, you're just, you're here Mm -hmm. already. So you need some time Mm. to just come back and get reconnected. And so I'm working now to figure out what are the things that make me do this and Mm. how do I get less of this? And, And so I'm working out I'm working on calling time out when I get to right about here and I go, okay, okay, stop before I I go here. Let's just pause three here. And so I'm, I'm working on trying to find what are those things in me that I can work on, um, myself, because gosh, I would love to have some of that gift that Maddie has of just being rational the whole time. Angie, Angie, I got to commend you on that. That's actually, it takes a lot of courage for you to, you know, Mm go and work on that because a lot of people can't really admit that to themselves you know a lot of people it's it's a lot of it is egos like i'm not wrong they're wrong you know and and i really do wish that maybe you can call vanessa up one day and have a little girl's (laughs) night at your therapist (laughs) and take her along with you because that would be so grateful i would be so grateful i mean just like a little girl's night at therapy office that's about it but no but but good job angie good job you're right most people most people are so good at remembering the thing that 
their partner has done wrong and they mm-hmm. just can't for anything remember anything that they've done wrong. And one thing I always tell Ange, I was like, I think most of our arguments, when they start from this end, from my end, I know why we argue on my end. And 99% of the time, it's because I, ass- I assume that she should know things that I know. Like, there's a lot of things that I know that I'm just like, you don't know that? Like, how do you not know that? Like, this is so common sense to me. Right. If it's not, if she isn't like clicking, then I'm like, I'll literally get annoyed and like angry. Like, how can you not know? Like, I almost did it just before we started this podcast. Something so small of like, take like we have two chairs, one on the right, one on the left. I'm setting up on the right. She's on the left. She takes the right chair and moves it over to her side. And I, I'm like... <laughs> Why'd you take the right chair when there's one right there? And she's like, I don't know. I just, uh, and I was so annoyed. Like, this is common sense. But yeah, I'm you know, like, it just goes to show you everybody's different, you know? Exactly. So and to presume that my way should be the duh or the common sense way is yeah. not at all common sense because yeah. I, I look that's, at things different. It's funny because that's ego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. like, it's like, hey, I'm right, you know, and this is kind of, or m- the lens through which I'm viewing everything, this is the standard. Right. As to say, in some ways, it's like, hey, I'm better. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I have to catch myself. I have to catch myself a lot and be like, oh, I'm not, I don't know everything. And that's one thing I really started like practicing <laughs> is letting go of the I know everything. There's things that I know. There's things that I'm very well versed in. I'm a smart dude, but I guarantee you, give me two years and I'll probably be changing my mind about everything that I thought I knew. And I'll be like, oh man, I didn't know. I didn't know what I thought I knew. I knew knew for that moment a little bit. Then I lived some more life and I gained some more knowledge and I realized, man, I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I need to reserve the right. I need to reserve my presumption of me knowing everything. Because I don't, and I need to shut my mouth because I don't want to be embarrassed when two years later I have to call myself out and be like, damn, remember when I swore I knew? Or forget it, let God humble me (laughs) and me make a horrible mistake where it's like it cost us so much money. And I'm like, but you have gotten better at that because one of our big arguments early on in marriage, which we haven't had lately was I would get so triggered that he would speak as if what he was saying was the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's what Mm -hmm. I would tell him because he would be sharing his opinion, but sharing it as if it was the gospel. And what he says is right, even though what he's saying is your opinion. And then so I would say things like, well, in your opinion. Well, yeah, it's my opinion. That's why I'm saying it. And I'm like, well, then stop saying it like those are facts from the encyclopedia because you're (laughs) pissing me off right now. Yeah, but you've gotten better at that because you you don't just when talk she like says you're we haven't professor. argued about that lately. It's years. It's been years. But that's what I'm I'm trying to give you props saying. Yeah, that yeah, you've I know, I know, better. I know. I'm just trying to throw a jab at you and say that it's been a longer than lately. Just throwing jabs, but this they're so, loving jabs. This is so entertaining. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> they're lo- they babe, they're loving jabs. I'm trying. I'm up here trying to. They're loving you know, jabs. I don't, I, stroke I'm, the ego. And I'm then good. they're a hundred percent. It's not. It's jabs. not good enough for him. <laughs> no, you know? I'm, good. I'm good. No, I, I like working on myself. I think there's something beautiful to be said. Like if I'm still the same dude in five years, and we're still arguing about the same things, like I don't, I don't like that. Which is a very, which was what I was saying before. I was like, babe, we don't have to be arguing about the same things. We really don't. All we got to well, do is hear each other. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean. <laughs> Wait, I was going to say something about what Ange said earlier about how you're getting to, I think one of the major things that happened with us um, was realizing when you, you're like, when you reached that point um, is just saying time out and say, you know what, stop, let's stop, let's take a break. But time out to you is us taking a time out and then you start texting me over and over again during our time out. <laughs> no, that, no, no, That's no. not a time out. That, that's, that's different. <laughs> How's that time out? No, but like when we fizz, like when I'm we I'm gonna get put my a... mouth on time out, but I'm gonna get my trigger fingers out. <laughs> Wait, Vanessa though, Vanessa though, do you um, do you have a fear that Mike will not come back 
to the to the conversation because I had that I had that problem with Ange. She would call a timeout because I was a nifty little therapy trick, <laughs> and then she would never bring it back up. So she would no. just call the timeout so that she can get me to shut up. I will respect the timeout, and then we never talk about it again <laughs> until the next argument. So you do what? you have that same fear? I'll let you answer. I I don't have that fear because I'm like. I want to get to the answer. I want to get to the resolution. Remember that little story about her waking up at 6.37 in the morning? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like. But if you didn't, but let me ask you this. If she didn't, Mike, like, would you ever come back? Me? And address, yeah. Would you no. be like, let's finish that combo? No. We literally had an argument like a week and a half ago. I left the house and, you know, I literally came back in, started fixing myself dinner, sat down, talked to the kids, said, hey, how's everybody going? Okay, so see, there that's... No, <laughs> because there was no I, resolution. That's like, he the just problem. Left. That's exactly. the problem. And it left yeah. me hanging with all this energy, like... Ugh, that's the biggest problem, which which is was something that when we were in therapy together, that's what the, the therapist had to point out. Because I was like, the reason why I don't want to stop the conversation and I keep going is because I know that if I stop... She will never bring it back up. She just won't. She'll just keep it going on her life, and there'll be this heaviness of like, I either have to accept two, one or one or the uh, of, of two things: either a she forgot, or b she just doesn't care enough about me to resolve this. And I think both are kind of like the same answer, to be honest, because if you forget what is important to the other person, or you just you just ignore it when shit blows up in the future or when you find that person just like so distant or so whatever you cannot blame that other person you can't you're gonna have to take your stripes because if someone's crying out for help or crying out for communication and then all of a sudden you realize that that person don't want to talk to you no more or that person's so far gone that you don't even feel love from them anymore it's because at some point or another i feel that you've ignored the, the cries for so long that it's it's kind of like they just gave up i get what you're saying manny i i, I really do and i'm not gonna I, i've been joking around a lot and i'm not gonna turn this one into a joke because I, uh, I think it's personal for us but um like i would love to come back to the conversation if holy shit i'm about to get in trouble if um we can talk about it and there was a light at the end of the tunnel if we could come to an, a conclusion either okay i agree with you i'm sorry for my part chapter close um instead of not knowing well what's the goal of this what what are we trying you know like like or, or like for example i'll just say like if i'm really i don't agree with that and that and, and you're for, you want me to agree with you and i'm not going to agree with you mm -hmm. and let's just agree to disagree that's it i still love you I'm not going anywhere. I don't want to go anywhere. The thought of breaking up with you doesn't even come across my mind. I love you. I love my kids. I love my family. Let's just have some ice cream and just chill. <laughs> but, you know, and so, but it's very hard for us to get to that. It, it, is. it is. It's very, very hard because I am, I am the type of person that I will forget about it. I'll come back in like, because, because there is a little hope in my, in, in me that, She'll maybe forget about it, which is not going to happen. But it's because I just don't want to argue with her. I hate arguing mm -hmm. with her. I, I really, I really hate it. It's, I love, I love just hanging out with her. I love waking up with her happy. I love going to bed with her happy. You know, I just don't like to do it. And so I, I will act as if everything's all good. You know. I think it comes down to a few things. It comes down to um, personality traits and communication styles. For instance me being like a peacemaker i don't like confrontation um so i'll never be eager to come back to a confrontational situation like exactly. that's not in that my sense. blood exactly. you know and it's not a big disrespect on you like i don't care about you i don't whatever it's it's literally in my hard wiring i am not <clears throat> the type of person to be like, all right, round two, let's go, you know? <laughs> and um, so I think it's a little bit of that. But then also one th another thing I learned from my therapist was that we have um, history and trauma and memory banks, right? So 
we have the trauma knowing that in this conversation is argument and fighting and whatever. So if I come back, like all the like wherever I'm storing that in my body is I know conflict is as soon as these words come out of my mouth. So it's a lot of um, fighting against your own hardwiring and then fighting against trauma that you have from the memory of the argument you got in before you went on that drive to come back to Vanessa, you know what I mean? It's stored in your body. So we have, it's not just about person and person, but it's, we're fighting within ourselves, our own ego, our own trauma, our own hard wiring. So we have a lot when we're talking about what does it take to stay connected and and stay together you're right it's not necessarily the vows it's work relationship is work oh yeah not yeah. just a lot of work. with each other work on ourselves we have to like go through I think the more, to more get to each other more work on ourselves than anything because the reality of it is is you cannot change the other person yeah you cannot you have zero ability to change them you can hope all day long that they'll see you hear you feel you it will never do anything. The only thing you can do is model the type of behavior that you would like to be given. That's 100%. it. One hundred percent. If you want, if you want somebody to listen to you, then you have to listen. If you want somebody to forgive you, you have to be forgive. You have to, you have to forgive them. And that's one thing that I've always, at least in my relationships, or and especially with my wife, when I ask for something, <clears throat> I from her I ask with utter and full confidence because I don't ask for nothing that I'm not already given given so giving excuse me uh because I know it's hypocritical and you know what made me think that like it was way back in the day when I was a kid I used to have this PE coach and he was fat as hell <laughs> fat but he would always ask me to work out and get in shape and he was my JV coach for basketball in high school and he would bust my balls because I wasn't whatever enough and i'm looking at this guy who can't like walk 10 feet without having to stop and heavy breathe and i'm like this fat a-hole is trying to tell me that i'm not in shape and it didn't make sense to me and then i had another friend who was overweight and would always tell me yeah man i want a hot chick with skinny waist and big boobs and i'm looking at him like bruh (laughs) like really you want what you're not willing to give, like this doesn't make any sense. And so it it really registered to me, like if I'm going to ask something of someone else, I better be willing to give it or else it is absolutely unfair, it's hypocritical and I won't get anywhere with it. So when I ask for communication, when I ask to be understood or when I ask whatever, I I know I'm willing to do the work, Mm. you know? So when Ange tells me, babe, this is bothering me. She knows it. I know it. Like there's, there's a history of proof of like, I change because I would love it when I said, baby, this is hurting me, that she approaches it like I do, which is immediate. I don't wait. I don't have this, I don't have this time of where I'm like, mm, let me see. I'll change when it feels okay for me to change. No, nah, she tells me something. And it's typically because it's gotten to a point where anytime where I had to change, it, it's gotten to like a, a a very pivotal point in our relationship like it's like uh, scary and instantly i think of the fear of like losing her or her like leaving or whatever and my whole body goes into shambles i mean i get sick you know like sick sick and i have to change immediately because i feel like it's dire i feel like it's literally at that point where i'm like oh i got to change or i'm going to lose her and there's there's nothing that is in me no viewpoint no ideology no whatever that's worth holding on to if it means i'm going to if it means i'm going to lose her you know well, what I'm that saying? means that means honestly picking up the mirror and asking yourself those questions you know is there truth to what this person says about me you know do i need to make some changes and, and i trust her and 9 times out of 10 when she tells me it's it's real like, I, I don't have no reason to not trust her. There's never been a time that she's ever tried to, like, uh, tell me something to hurt me, like, to, to make me worse. She's not, like, telling me, yo, you do this, and she's just trying to tell me so that I'll become a worse person so that she can later on point out that I'm a bad person. You know, it's usually, like, something to better me. And I'm like, it it sucks to hear it, but at the same time, 
I kind of look at it with pride. And it's something else that I wanted to bring up. She makes fun of me because I don't consider arguments arguments. I don't like using the word argument. I don't because it has a negative connotation. So when you when you hear the word argument, it, it denotes that there are two people on opposite sides that are coming at each other. And when it comes to marriage, I never want to be on the opposite side. I want to be on the same side in a huddle talking about the disagreement so that when I get to the scrimmage, when I get to the line, we're still going against the world because it's us against the world. So I don't see anything as an argument. I just see it as a discussion because at the end of the day, I'm not really going to land, even though I might ideology, like ideologically land on another side, like the agree to disagree thing, but it doesn't mean I'm switching teams. We're still on the same team. So... I'm agreeing to us, even though I don't agree with these specific things that you may agree with. So when I agree with us, that means I'm approaching this on the same side as you. We're never on the on opposite sides, which is why I don't like to use the word argument. They're just discussions. They're just getting to know each other more. That's all they are for me. Hmm. No, cool. we have arguments. We have arguments. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. Not for me. I mean, there, me. there are discussions and then there's arguments. Talking loudly are not discussions. <laughs> Yelling at me is not discussions. That's just being Latino. It's being passionate. <laughs> <laughs> My parents yeah. talk loud. That's how, yeah, it's just how they talk. I don't, I, it doesn't affect me like that. It's I've more woken, what's being said. When we're at his family's house, I've woken up so many times to them not arguing, but just talking very Puerto Rican like in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, babe, stop yelling at your parents. And he's like, I'm not yelling at them. But they're both like way up here being uh-huh. like, Papa, no, why? And all, oh, my God. Mira, coño, chico, así viene el sandwich. Yeah, yeah, all that kind yeah. of yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of that, all of that. If I had to say one thing, like if it, if it, if it, if it came down to one thing, of, and this is, I can speak for me, but each of y'all can speak for yourself. I feel like nothing can make or break a relationship uh, more than communication. That I think it's higher than physical sex, any anything, money, whatever. Because I know I know money and sex are the top two reasons people get divorced, which Ange you know pointed out. And I was like, babe, I don't know if we have to study that. I think we have to study the thing that keeps people together. I like to and, study more sex. <laughs> yeah, I think communication because even I'm just but even saying. the thing about sex. It's communication about sex that makes it all worth yes. it. Yes. It's communicating and, and being understood and being heard um, that I feel really makes people connect and stay. That's, wait, wait, I'm that's sorry. my opinion. Are you saying being heard that you want more sex? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's I hear? communication about sex. Yeah. It's more important than the sex itself. Dude, I because communicate if the person... every night trying to communicate with her. <laughs> Is that what do you mean? <laughs> Yo, baby, what's up? <laughs> oh, my son's in the other room. Sorry. But, <laughs> How did he but get I here? think I think I think really like if you know it's it's not the money that breaks people apart or the sex. It's the lack of communication of those things, hmm. of of the expectation of those things. So we we it's just like when we talk about the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not the love of money. You know, it's it's always it's not money that it is. It's it's your attitude towards money. So in the same way with relationships, it's your attitude towards communication. And are you willing to be wrong? Is it okay to be wrong? Is it okay Absol- to be? Oh human? yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely. No, I, so I, I, it's learning from it though too. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I I always tell Vanessa when we have loud discussions um that you know hey babe i don't care i'm not trying to i'm not trying to argue to be right i'm not trying to make you wrong i'm just trying to tell you how i feel and if Mm -hmm. i disagree it's nothing's wrong with that you know i I still love you you know i'm I'm not gonna you know take off and never come back you know that that's but she just gets mad when i don't disagree agree with when i disagree with her so you know no that's not i mean i feel like honestly our our discussions, arguments have gotten a lot better throughout the years. Like they haven't been as extreme as they were I mean, in our first five years. Like, yeah, last five years. Like they used to get to the point where, you know, Vanessa would start talking about breaking up every single yeah, time. Yeah, w- it was really bad. You know, and, and now we haven't talked about that in a long time, you know. So, yeah. and I remember, I remember the last time we talked about that. So yeah. we had a really great discu- a discussion. Yeah. A, 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 a calm discussion about, you want to bring it up? 
I don't know what you're talking about. No, well, of course, of course <laughs> I'd remember them. I mean, I remember I actually he had... He remembers a, everything. I remember I had a conversation because Vanessa would always bring up, what are we doing together then? What are we doing? You know, and, and honestly, you know, um, she had one foot out the relationship, you know, and, and I kind of did sometimes, but I never wanted to go anywhere. I loved her. You know, I loved her from the moment I saw her. I, I was in love with her and I knew that was mine. Uh, that's who yeah. I wanted to be. I dreamt about her my whole life. And I finally got her, and I didn't want to go away. I didn't. I didn't want to go anywhere. And I remember I had a a, a really good conversation. 2017, January. I remember now, right before we met you guys in Spain. Um, I told her I was like, you know what? You always bring up breaking up. I'm getting tired of you bringing it up all the time. If that just means that you have one foot out the door, if you want to go, I'm not going to stop you anymore because I felt like I was fighting for us a lot because I didn't want to go anywhere, and. Um, she actually heard that and she actually says yeah you're right I, and i told her if you have one foot out the door you're not concentrating on me you're not concentrating on us no. you're looking at the door and maybe looking at me not knowing which way to go and if you're doing that then you're not here so you're not going to put it in 100 percent. so if you want to go go we'll figure out how to how to be parents to our kids you know we'll figure that out uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, a, 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 I'm on your side as far as being a parent. And she came to me a couple days later, says, you're right. You know, and, and I wasn't trying to be right, but she's like, you're right. I do have one foot out the door. And because it changed how you address things and how I, I saw us, you know, instead of me going to that extreme, like, oh my God, what are we doing together? If we can't even, you know, talk about little things. Um, and it made me realize, you know what? He has a point. Like I, I can't be thinking like this is yet. Let's see what we, we can do between us, how we can work things out, um, how we can come to uh, a resolution without it getting to that extreme and for me to start change my thinking. So that was that was definitely a game changer. That change that one single from that conversation moment changed our whole relationship. Yeah, isn't it that really insane, did. though, how it's all. <laughs> It wasn't some magical thing. It was just putting down, like what B said, putting down the ego for one minute to in, to take in the other person's heart and be like, they're right. I feel like there is such a fear of being wrong that we mm -hmm. will die on the cross to be right. And then we'll end up alone. But we'll be right. And the only thing we'll have is our friends and we'll keep telling them, yeah, you know, but I was right. And he was wrong, and he did this. Yeah, but you're alone. Like you're alone in your life. <laughs> like who cares yeah. about being yeah. being right when you're alone? Yeah. You know, it's. I just don't think it's worth. Now there are. Now let me let me preface that there are things that are worth being right and alone for. Like if you're getting yeah. your butt abused and that and yeah. her no, or him no, are out yeah, and they're freaking story. cheating on you nonstop. Yes, it's it's okay to be right and alone, but. I'm talking about in the internal and in the, in the stuff that you know that you you have those consistent arguments about that that you will die on your sword. You will be like, nope, yeah. I'm right, I'm right, but you'll end up right and alone. And that's something that yeah. I just ne I don't think it's worth it. I think if we can look past our ego and realize that the person that we're with, and this comes down to what Brandon said that Maddie felt about him is it ultimately ultimately comes down to trusting the other person. Do they have pure love towards you and want to see you better? And if you believe that, then you'll trust what comes out of their mouth, that it's for your betterment. Like the Bible says, you know, wounds from a friend can be trusted. Like They're going to have to say some stuff and you're going to have to get hurt, but they can be trusted because that person has good intention towards you. If you don't think that they have good intention towards you, then you're never, the communication will never get to where it needs to be. And the relationship won't ever get to where it needs to be because you'll always have these reserves of mistrust and anger. And anytime right. you need to, you'll pull, you'll pull from it. Yeah, I also think that it, um, a lot of it is how one approaches the other person too. Like, is it the time? Is it the, you yeah. know, because you can be like at a party and all of a sudden, you know, you hear, not necessarily, I can't even think of a specific example. Because that's never happened. But, or, you know, it's just like not an appropriate time to discuss it. And then you, the reaction is like, 
of pure defensiveness because it's like, what the hell? You're talking to me right now about this stuff? Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is, you know, and you get upset because you're like, is it the time? Is it like, is it perfect right now? Can I talk to you about this? So <laughs> because it's never the right time. It's never it's, the right time. Because it's like I, I'm she, working she, or she, she's I like will say this though. Net, she's like, I'm watching The Handmaid's Tale. I'm like, I, I, I'm into I, it. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, babe. Kidding. I'm, no. like, I'm like, babe, is this the right time? She's like, I'm walking from the kitchen to the living room. No, it's not the right time. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. not true. <laughs> that, that, that used it's to be never the right time. No, like, no, there is. But, you know, <laughs> obviously, right, of, I love of, you, the, of the couples what here, Maddie you? and I are of the couples here. Maddie and I are the youngest, first. right? Oh, oh, man. Okay. Every time I try to say something. No, can you? No, no, we can hear you. Oh, OK. We can hear you, but you're just frozen on camera. Awesome. He's talking now. Okay, yeah. I felt like early on that got me in trouble because, again, now I understand when Maddie is the most receptive to me wanting to have a serious conversation. And it's just trying to, like, have the wisdom to navigate, is this the right context? Is this the right moment? And then also understanding, okay, how do I phrase it in a way that she doesn't shut down on me, Yeah. but she's the most open to receive from me? And again... That's the other, I feel like, part of communication is understanding when and also what not to say. Because, again, that's, that's like, that's it. And so I'm learning a lot, especially when it comes to that, of like, I know, I'm like, you know what? We'll probably have this conversation at the end of the week. And as much as I would love to have it right now, I just know, hey, Maddie's dealing with some things. She's stressed right here. So she probably won't be thinking about, hey, how's Brandon feeling right now? It might be more of like, hey, I feel so overwhelmed right now. I'm over my head. I'm not in a place to have this conversation. And so understanding context and then also how to phrase it. And um, yeah, I feel like that's that's one of the huge things. That is so things. true. Because I remember our last argument, me and Ann, I for whatever reason, had to have this discussion right before she put herself on tape for some audition. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't I don't know what it was. Oh, it was something dumb. It was, oh, oh, the, the tripod. She put she she put the phone in the tripod and the and and pulled the phone out of the tripod and the whole phone carrier thing came out of the tripod. And and I was like, what happened? She goes, I don't know. It just came out. And I'm like, it didn't just come out. You pulled it out. Just say you pulled it out. And she really got upset because she thought I was accusing her of breaking the thing. And I'm like, no, it was just funny to me that something came out that you pulled and you said, oh, it just came out. And so it was something so small, something so trivial. And I, I thought it was funny. She did not think it was funny. She no. got real pissed. And then we turned in her audition and her agents were like, yeah, this come this came out really like you were upset. <laughs> like <laughs> you're channeling some kind of upset. And I didn't book it because he don't know when to choose the right time. I did. I did. I did feel bad in that, in that aspect. Cause it, yeah, my bad. Mm -hmm. And also, you got to pick your battles too. Sometimes. That's no, it was so stupid. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. It. it was. It so was battles. not funny. Yeah, it was dumb. At yeah. All. yeah. That's one thing that we th we say to each other. Is it a big thing or is it a small thing? No, that's what I say to you. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> it's like, okay, just shut up, breathe, 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 and then it'll go away. And then sometimes I'm like, no, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That, was that is true. So when you're, you know what, when your friends ask you then, you know, what, because I, I know Mike, you told me this. You was like, why, like, how do you guys stay? Because again, like I said at the beginning of the episode, like, all the things that we focus on that we think makes a marriage, when we actually get into the marriage, we realize, man, it's 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 very much other things. Like to me, like I remember, when, you know, as Christians, we made, I know B, we made jokes like this, that it's like before you got saved, I mean, before you got married, you know, you're technically not supposed to be sleeping with each other. Then in your mind, you're like, oh, once we get married, it's on, you know, it's about to be popping. Then you get married and you realize, Man, there's a lot of things that take you out of the mood quickly when you're mm -hmm. married. 
that it's like instantly it's stress it's work it's all these things that it's not as sexy as like when you're single and you ain't with that person the whole day you're just out there doing your own life and you thinking about them so it's like easy to be like yeah when we get together for those three hours it's gonna be on and then you leave <laughs> But now when you're married, it's, it's not because you're seeing your, your other person in every situation. You wake up in the morning. She's taking her morning dump. You know, you got to be like, oh, that's not that's not as sexy as the, as the Instagram girls. You know, like, do they take craps too? Like, do they, do they take craps? Does it smell? I be, you know, like, and then, and then by the end of the day, life has led you to this place where it's like, it's not always that sexy. So I know it's not you the know things what? that we... You got to keep it sexy, man. You know what? Oh, I'm, for I'm, sure. I'm, I'm but, how, as... but what... Okay, good point. What What is keeping it sexy? Yeah. What is... Well, you <laughs> because know... I'm, I don't know. I don't know if it is just staying... Uh, um, like, I know fit. I mean, keeping yourself in some type of sexy state is great. But uh, I think you can be hot as hell. But if you're ugly, you know, if you're bringing out ugly, I don't, I don't think, Ooh. I don't think that makes it sexy. No, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I love my wife every which way, whatever she, except for these ugly pajamas that she has. When I know she has these <laughs> ugly pajamas, I'm like, oh, I ain't getting anything tonight. Dude. But they're suck. so comfortable. But, I mean, they're so comfortable. Man, I was like, damn, she got those pajamas on. I know nothing's going to happen. But I mean, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Oh, that's funny. And, I mean, my wife, the kids are in the room, right? Uh, my wife literally cannot walk past me without me grabbing on her. I'll grab her booty at least five fifty times a day. You know, I'll I'll massage her feet. You know, she puts her feet, feet over my my body in bed, and I'll start massaging them any And I'll walk over there, baby. I'm gonna massage your feet. You know, I'll every the morning I like to hug her, and then at night I like to go to bed with her in my arms. You know, for a little bit, and then he gets too hot. So I'm like, okay. yeah, me too, yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. that's the truth. That's me too. I'm like, all right, we'll cuddle. Here we go. But, Fifteen minutes. I'm hot. Uh oh. Am I frozen again? <laughs> 15 minute timer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ding, ding, I mean, my, ding. my favorite thing to do is taking my girl out. You know, I like to take her out all the time. I like to take her out to, to the bars. I like to get her, uh, you know, a little tipsy because then I know it's on. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. I'm be, I'm keeping it real, you know. I gotta I gotta get my wife drunk so she can turn into my girlfriend. Oh my sometimes. god, so, you know? <laughs> she can turn into my girlfriend. So. <laughs> but we still do things for each other. Oh, yeah. and we still want to go out together, and I think that's, you know, you it's guys hard, do. especially with the kids. You know, so much our lives can revolve around their, around revolve around them, and so it's yeah. nice to like connect with one another. And I don't like going anywhere without her. I really like when I go out with friends. I'm like, man, I wish she was here. So, yeah. you know, I miss mm -hmm. her. I miss her a lot. That's sweet. I freaking love it, man. I feel like we can talk about this all day long, but it is approaching <laughs> 434 and our, we're going oh, live wow. at five. Oh, yeah. So I'm super grateful for Mike and Vanessa for coming on. We love you guys so much. I can't wait Thanks, till the quarantine yeah. is over so yeah. we can have parties yes. again. Thank Thanks. you for your honesty and contributing your real life to the podcast we appreciate you yeah no yeah, problem anytime. maybe next time we'll tell you about how she lost her wedding ring <laughs> oh no <laughs> so, so we'll my that's engagement another, ring whatever we're not married. so we'll talk we'll talk about that another time but yeah i ah, love that, it another I... reason why i don't believe in weddings i believe in a marriage <laughs> not a wedding so there you go but Thanks, i love guys. that you still refer to her as your wife even though yeah she's she's yeah, my wife i love that she's yeah so she's my I baby mama's it. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey man if you guys were blessed by it leave comments share with your friends um we truly appreciate it i'll put mike and vanessa's info underneath uh the comment section and youtube if you're not following us on youtube go to youtube check us out at mind of manny and uh, you'll check out all the podcasts all the music all the good stuff um and we're grateful subscribe like all that good stuff and uh we pray you find a seat at the table but if you don't you are truly welcome at ours Love you, cool. Love you guys. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
can hear the crowd giving on call. I can hear the crowd giving on call. Come, come, tell me what you're here for. I'm ready for my encore. I won't stop. I won't stop. Encore. I won't stop. I won't stop. Encore. I won't stop. I won't stop. Encore. Come, come, tell me what you're here for. Quest to be the best alive According to some sources I can stop the trying I ignore whoever don't add to my life I'm like Curry when he's shooting I don't see that line You can never box me, box me never dog I am so bionic You just analog Yes you miss what I was saying Boy you dropped the call Man I'm balling every season I don't wait for fall I can hear the crowd giving on call I can hear the crowd giving on call. I can hear the crowd giving on call. Give me more, give me more with the on call. I won't stop, I won't stop. You know I want it. For me to give up, and just die. give up and just die But the problem is I do not listen that well So I cannot comply can, can When they tell me I can I just laugh and I said I believe I will try, try. So get out my way I'm a level of feeling Cause all of my haters get by They telling me no, telling me no. But I only, I only hear yes They can say what they want But the problem is I am selectively deaf yeah. You can tell that I'm hungry. hungry Guess what we having for dinner tell, A rack tell. of these fools who said I would lose I know that they mad I'm a winner I can hear the crowd giving on call I can hear the crowd giving on call. I can hear the crowd giving on call. Give me more, give me more, where the on call. I won't stop, I won't stop. You know I want it. Yeah.